These I already took. So, how many are there? Seven, only seven. 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 <laughs> and these are one second. Can you show me previous page? Yes, yes. This one. Previous page from starting. How do they number it? How do they want to match it? Like A, B, D, E. So, sir, this is A, B, uh, A, A, B. And this is C, D, E. Okay. And then D, E. Okay. And, okay. and then. Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, yeah. five, five. Like this. Okay, so I have taken A, B, D. Now I take C. So C is this one. C then three, four, five. C and three. Yeah. C and three. I'm taking. Yeah. Further move down. Four, five. Okay. Look it. This is six seven. Yeah, six seven. Fine. Now I'm sharing this is and I have to start. Can you can you stop sharing? Yes, sir. I'm starting one note. <clears throat> okay. So let us start from here. This is a straight line, which is like this. Okay. And yeah. you have to find its derivative graph. Now, the derivatives are, I'm writing derivatives here. This yeah. is 3. Then, after that, Sir, so, can you four. explain how to do it? Like how these work? I don't understand. Yeah, I will make you understand. Uh, you can't. Uh, whatever is suitable here, I will tell you. Okay, okay, sir. I'll tell a graph like this. Three, four, five. And then it will be six. Then it will be seven. So Derivative is actually, if you remember, I told you delta y by delta x, that is change in y by delta, change in x. If this delta x approaches 0, 
then for a curve this becomes slope of tangent and this slope of tangent is written as dy by dx so this is actually the curve here now slope of tangent is the derivative this is you have to understand that slope of tangent is the derivative so if you see the slope here this angle is theta so tan theta is equal to constant right yeah now this constant is the derivative now if you see that among the among the five graphs which have been given to match which is constant graph so there are two graphs one this graph third one another seventh graph these two graphs are constant that is the line is parallel to x axis these two are constant graphs other are not constant so for this graph the derivative should be constant because this theta angle is a constant angle wherever you take a straight line you see that the theta angle if it is a curve suppose if it is a curve like this so tangent is here like this tangent is here like this so some angle here another angle here so angle changes slope changes but here since it is a straight line slope does not change slope remain as it is it is fixed so tan theta is constant that is derivative is constant it is fixed now whether we take third one or seventh one so again if you see this graph this is like this that at two you are getting two other numbers also you can see that at two it is two is zero zero so if you see the triangle so tan theta is actually equal to perpendicular y base that is two by two which is one so slope is one slope is equal to 1 which means the derivative is 1 now if you take the third one so third one is passing through 1 third one is passing through 1 this line is passing through 1 you can easily see and the seventh one if you see the seventh one it is not passing through one it is okay it is below it is in fact below the x-axis if you see the seventh one this is below the x-axis and it is passing through minus one so here the slope is one so this is the graph third one which is corresponding to the graph of A. This is A. So I have drawn the graph of A here and I have explained how out of the five graphs of the derivatives, third one is the correct matching. So what you have to do, you have to see the slope and by the help of the slope, you can understand the nature of the derivative then the value of the slope will give you the value of the derivative so are you getting this yes sir kind of okay one by one we will do and you will slowly get it so you should write this down first <coughs> Okay. 
for A, it's three, right? For A, it's three. Now we'll move on to B. Have you written it? Yeah, yes, sir, I know. Now B graph is this one. Something like this. So we have we don't have to exactly find the derivative here. You have to just see the nature. Okay. So what am I doing? I am making a tangent at this point. Then I am making a tangent at this point, which is the x-axis itself. Then I am making a tangent at this point. Okay, at these three points, I'm making the tangent. What we observe the tangent here is this one, theta, is making an acute angle. This is the acute angle. So you can say that the slope is positive because tan theta will be tan of acute angle, which will be positive. Okay, acute angle, which is less than 90 degrees. Then when the tangent is parallel to x-axis, that is overlapping with the x-axis, slope will be zero because tan of zero is zero. Angle is zero, so theta is equal to zero. Tan of zero is equal to zero, slope is zero, okay? okay. And then we have this one, this angle. This angle is some other angle alpha, it is an obtuse angle. Now, if angle is obtuse, then the slope will be negative because this theta is greater than 90 degree. So tan of value, which is between 90 and 180 is negative. Obvious angle slope is negative. So what we observe that as we move on, the derivative is actually positive, zero, negative. So now see the options. Positive, zero, negative. Derivative is, one second. Positive, zero. It's hanging, my laptop is hanging a little bit. Oh, yeah, I think it's the full thing. One second, something has happened to my laptop. Okay, okay. So that's coming to it. So we have positive, zero, negative. So you are saying four. Yeah. Uh, derivative is uh, that will be uh, five now. But isn't that negative zero then positive? Uh, it is positive now. First, it is positive, right? Yeah. So these values are negative. Positive. Why is positive now? Okay, we look at the y axis. Okay. Y, when it is zero, when it is negative, it's a straight line. Okay, okay, yeah. So it is positive zero negative. So this is positive zero negative. As you go across x, x is same in both. X is same. You go from negative x to positive x. Here also you go from negative x to positive x. What happens to the graph of function, which is the derivative. So that is from positive zero to negative. So for second one, it is fifth. For B, it is fifth. So for A, it is third. For B, it is fifth. Are you getting it? Yeah. Okay. Now we come to C. So if we see the C part here, it is on another page. It was like this. Yeah, you can try C, I think. Can you try C? Yeah, I will try C. So this is just the opposite of the first one. So will it be? Yeah, it will be minus one. Constant and minus one. So it will be seven. Yeah, it will be seven. 
because it is a straight line and its slope is actually minus one. Yeah. If you see it's like, if you see it's tan theta, So what you observe that just take any one point, this is two, this is minus two. So this you drop it, this is theta. So the antithesis is perpendicular, which is minus two, by base, which is two, which is minus one. So the derivative is actually constant, which is minus one. So the graph okay. will be parallel to x-axis cutting it at minus one, this constant. Okay. Yeah. Now you can try next one is. I think yeah. it's D. D, yeah, you can try D. So this is also the opposite as the other one, right? Yes. So it will so be four. It will be four that is slope is positive or derivative is negative zero positive. So this will be negative zero. Yeah, correct. And what we have next is P. So can you explain the last one after? Yeah, I will explain the last one. So we know that it will be six. Yeah. So basically, what happens? Derivative is one degree smaller, mostly. So if you see a line, a straight line. So its slope dy by dx is equal to constant. So it becomes parallel to the derivative becomes parallel to x axis. So this is the function y is equal to f of x. And this is actually dy by dx, which you call as f dash. Similarly, if we see quadratic graph, this type of graphs are generally quadratic graphs. So the derivative will be linear okay. like this. or if it is like below quadratic, then it will be like this. Anything, I don't know which I have matched, but it will be linear. So you can see that one degree decreased. Now, if it is cubic, what happens in cubic? It may be like this, 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 this cubic. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So then its derivative will be quadratic. Either it could be like this or it could be like this, anything like this. So this shows quadratic. So that is why if you take a function of cubic, its derivative is quadratic. If you take a function of quadratic, its derivative was linear. If you take a function as linear, then its derivative is constant. And if you take a function as constant, that was not given here. But if a function is constant, like this, then its derivative is zero. That means it That's will be right. overlap with the x-axis. Okay. So this is the nature of the derivative and the function. So here, as we see, the last one is a cubic. We can have a just a small idea. I can't go into the detail of it. So okay. that is cubic. So you will say that its derivative is quadratic. So the quadratic graph is only sixth one that we can take. Okay. What are the different cases? Constant, linear, quadratic, cubic. This you can roughly you can think. This has many cases along with it. There is no one particular case, but you can roughly think that constant graph is like this. It can be above, it can be below. Linear is like this, or it could be like this also. Okay. Quadratic is like this. It can be like this. It can be like this. Cubic is somehow like this. 
So as you go on increasing the degree, you will get different type of cubic could be like this also. Okay. Okay, so. so next you can share next question. I'm stopping it. You have written it? Um, yes, sir. Yeah. You can start sharing. I'm coming in a minute from Washington. Okay, so, yeah. Okay, these are off limits. Okay, so, so I think this question, this question, I don't get this state domain and range. So basically, domain is the value of x where you can draw the graph. Okay, okay. so if you see here that the value of x where the graph is being drawn is everywhere except x is equal to 0. If you take x is equal to 0, you can see that the red line won't touch the y-axis. Okay. The red line will not touch the y-axis, either from the right one, that is right red line is going down, 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 but it is not touching the y-axis. Or the left red line is also going down, down, but it is not touching the y-axis. So okay. if it is not touching the y-axis, what it means is that x is equal to 0, there is no output. There is no output at x is equal to 0. Okay. Yeah. So in domain, you will say that all real numbers are there, but 0 is not there. That is r except 0. And similarly, if we talk about the range, let me take the pick of this okay. or range. I will have to, I can't orally tell you. So, so 
if you see the range this graph is like this this, this is a line parallel to x axis and we are passing through minus 2 my 0 and minus 4 middle of 0 and minus 4 and this graph goes like this and this graph goes like this and the point here is and they have not given the point okay okay from symmetry if this is minus 4 minus 2 then this is 2 okay so this will be like this and then it is going like this fine so if you observe this graph what is happening over here that what are the values of y that are being getting covered range means values of y domain means values of x so domain is real number except zero zero is not getting covered but range is the value of y so you can see that from minus infinity the graph is going up and this part of the graph is going till minus 2 before minus 2 and this yeah. part of the graph is going till 2 then coming down so the values above 2 are not getting covered these values are not getting covered so you will say minus infinity comma 2 this is the range from infin from 2 to infinity it is not getting covered whereas domain is minus infinity comma infinity except 0 this is the domain do you write like this or you write like this so So R is for domain, it's only R. Uh, R, R means real numbers. Minus so, infinity to infinity. Okay. All the values of X. Minus infinity. And range is? Values of Y. <clears throat> okay. At zero, you are not getting any output. That is why it was. So zero is excluded. Okay. So then the next question. Yeah, thanks. Sir. So how do we do this kind of limit? The yeah, first share it. I will just. Oh, okay. These. Okay, so if you okay, x is infinity. Okay, no issue. Let me tell you. First, let me take the pick. So, if you see this type of question, one thing is to be mostly it is done like this. That if it is limit x approaching plus infinity, it is given. And it is given minus 2x square plus 8x minus 4 by x square. This is what is given here. So, 
you just write them separately x approaching plus infinity you will apply later on minus 2 x square by x square will be minus 2 plus 8 x by x square will be 8 by x minus 4 by x square this is how you can write it if you divide by x square all of all three of them yeah yeah this will be that. this is what you are going to say now minus 2 is a constant is will not be affected if you put x as infinity what will be its reciprocal infinity zero by 8 8 by infinity yeah so 8 you will think later 8 into 1 by infinity so 1 by infinity is actually 0 so this okay. will be 0 minus 4 what about 1 by infinity square this will also be zero. zero. Same as zero. Same as zero. If a very large value is squared, it will you will again get a very large value. Yeah. So this will be also zero. So minus two will be the final answer. Okay, so yeah, I think next question is would you like to try next question? Yeah, I'll try next question. Sir. Next question is same actually. The only thing they have done is they have said that limit x is approaching minus infinity. So it will be the same, right, sir? So it will be also same. Because yeah. if you take the reciprocal of minus infinity, then it also zero. That will also be zero. Yes, Whether sir. you take the reciprocal of infinity, that will also be zero. Minus infinity, that will also be zero. So go to it. Now let us come to next one. So next one, uh, second one you have done now? Yeah, second one is the same. Same. Okay, third one, let us see. Third one, what is happening? Question is same, only limit is limit x approaching 0 plus. So this part is same that it is minus 2 plus 8 by x minus 4 by x square minus 2 plus 8 by x minus 4 by x square. <coughs> so if you take x as 0 plus its reciprocal will be infinity. Here also 4 into uh, 0 plus a square is infinity. So whatever, what will be the final value? Actually, if you see, if you compare the two infinities, this is actually 1 by 0. And this is actually 1 by 0 whole square. So this infinity is greater than this infinity is greater because it is a square. Are you getting my point? One is 1 by x, one is 1 by x square. So if you take approaching zero here, and if you check, take approaching zero here and you square it, so this will be infinity square and this will be infinity. Of course, infinity square is infinity, but this infinity is greater than this infinity. Okay. So, so when you will write the final answer, you will say 
that a minus infinity is written plus infinity. So overall, it will be minus infinity. That will be your answer. And if so, if if the fourth part, if you see fourth part, they have given limit x approaching zero minus limit at x approaching zero minus. So there it will be minus two plus eight by x minus four by x square, and x is approaching zero minus. So minus two. This is zero minus. So reciprocal of zero minus, just left of zero, is minus infinity. So this will be minus infinity, and zero minus a square is zero plus. So it is plus infinity. So minus four into infinity it will be. So it will be overall minus infinity. So this will be the answer. So both will give you minus infinity. One by zero minus will be minus infinity. One by zero plus will be plus So can you explain again? I understand. Okay. So here it is minus 2 plus 8 by 0 plus minus 4 by 0 plus a square. Yeah. This is minus 2 plus infinity minus infinity. Yes. But this infinity is greater than this infinity because so it is 0 square. Okay. So overall it will be minus infinity. This is greater than its sign will be taken. Yeah. In next one, it is minus two, and this is zero minus. So x is zero minus. So if you take reciprocal of zero minus, you get minus infinity. So eight into minus infinity will be minus infinity, and zero plus zero minus minus infinity square will be plus infinity. So this will be plus infinity and minus outside, so minus infinity. So overall, it will be minus infinity. If you take a square of minus infinity, you will get plus infinity. So both will give you minus infinity. So, so the final answer for the third one will be minus infinity. Yes. What are you asking? How will how, what will happen to the minus two? Minus two is a very small number. It will not make any difference. Okay, so it's um, so eight by infinity will become zero, right? Eight by zero, it is the huh? x is approaching zero minus. Okay. So eight by zero will become infinity, but it will be minus infinity because it is zero minus. <laughs> If you take a reciprocal of very, very small value, it will be a very, very large value. That is what it is saying. Okay. Yes, sir. Then the fourth one is also the same, similar one that it will be positive, right? Yeah. Fourth one, this is the no? fourth one. And this is the third one. This is the third one. Should I do it fresh again? No, no, no. It's fine. It's fine. How is the 
how is the plus turning minus? Where? Over here, uh, the second step of the fourth one. Minus two, minus infinity, minus infinity. Yes. So, so isn't it plus eight by x? So x is zero minus, na? Okay, so it will become minus infinity. Okay. If you take a very like like you take, let me take a value like this, minus zero point zero 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 zero, and take take reciprocal. You will get one zero zero zero. Yeah, like this. Yeah. So if you take with a minus sign, so if you take minus zero minus, you get minus infinity. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. Done. Sir, so is this graph continuous? Which graph? Which this graph? Oh, it's the third question. State whether the graph is continuous. If it is not, this uh, one. State, yeah, this one. State where it is. It has a discontinuity. It is discontinuous at x is equal to zero, because there it is getting break, na? It is not defined also, and there is a break also. So it is discontinuous because it's not joining, right? Yeah, it is not joining. So it's discontinuous at zero. At zero. Because when you start drawing it, you don't have to lift the pen till zero. At zero, you have to lift the pen. Then again, after crossing zero, again, when you draw this, you don't have to lift the pen. So at zero, you are lifting the pen. Okay. This is zero na x. This is this continuous at zero and it has and it is not the two lines are not meeting. That can also be a point. No, that is not necessary needed. Okay. Yeah. So then these uh, evaluate the other, other question. Sorry? Uh, it's a different question, sir. Should I screen share? Yeah, yeah, one second. Yeah, please. <coughs> Use the principal definition to differentiate O. o, o. First principle definition, okay. So let me take the pick and I will explain it to you. Okay. So the first principle was, as you remember that when a statement was there, they didn't give any example to show it, but they have given the question here. So the first principle of derivative is basically, Just remember this. This is called first principle of differentiation. And it is basically limit h approaching 0, f of x plus h minus f of x upon h. So this is what we are having. Yeah. Now, as a question, first question is y is equal to 4x minus 1. What is y? y is nothing else but is fx is equal to 4x minus 1. And this is its derivative, f dash of x, which we also call as dy by dx. So if we calculate dy by dx here, which is f dash of x, it is limit h approaching 0, f of x plus h. So f of x is 4x minus 1. f of x plus h will be 4 into x plus h minus 1. 4x will be 4x minus 1, like this, upon h. So this will be limit h approaching 0, 4x plus 4h minus 1 minus 4x plus 1 
minus 1 plus 1 cancels minus 4x 4x cancels upon h so limit h approaching 0 4h by h now h h cancel and you get 4 as your answer okay so you just see the steps this is what we studied there this derivative first principle this formula was given which i told you this is the slope of the tangent and if there is some function given like this you have to just put it there as this the formula says f of x, x plus h so the input is instead of x x plus h when f of x then it is simply x and then you proceed okay just write it down So, so the others also will be the same, right? Sorry? The other ones will also be the same. Yeah, can would you like to try that? Yeah, I'll try it, sir. So, but in this one, there is 11x square. So, can I write it as 11x into? Yeah, you can do it like this. This is no quadratic. That was a linear one. This is a quadratic one. So, here, here also you can do similar way. Like when you find f dash of x. So, you can write f of x plus h first. Minus f of x by h and limit h approaching 0. So here, 11x squared plus 2x is the function, right? 11x squared plus 2x yeah. is the function. So you write it like this. This is 11x plus h whole square plus 2x plus h. So this is f of x plus h. Minus fx is minus 11x squared minus 2x upon h limit h approaching 0. Now you can expand the numerator if you want. So if you'll expand so, it. So we put um, x as x plus h everywhere. Yeah. In f of x plus h, when you will find, you'll put the input x plus h. So but in the other one, uh, y equals 4x minus 1, we put x as x plus h. Here also we are putting x as x plus h. So everywhere we put x plus h. Yeah, that is why it is f of x plus h. No? Where it is f of x, we'll take f of x. Where it is f of x plus okay, h. So. Yeah. Should I expand it further or you will do? No, I, I can do that.
So I'm getting twenty two X H plus H square plus two H by H. I think you're muted, you're muted. I can't hear you. So can you hear? I can't hear you, sir. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm saying this is 11 H square. Is it 11 H square? Oh, yeah, it's 11 H square. Yes, sir. Okay, rest is yeah. fine. So you take H as common. This will be 22x and then it will be plus h plus 2 upon h and you can cancel this h. Now you put h 0, so you will get 22x plus 2 as your answer. So, but isn't it limit x of x equal 0? Yeah, it is limitation. That is why at the end we have put h as zero. Okay. But before putting, before we haven't put it because it will become undefined zero by zero. So we have cancelled after taking h common. Yes, sir. Yeah. 